What's up guys, Andre here, and today I want to show you how to utilize DigitalOcean Spaces in your Laravel application. DigitalOcean Spaces is an object storage service and allows you to store large amounts of static, unstructured data like audio, video, images, and documents. It is a direct competitor to Amazon's S3 service and is designed to work with any tool or library that currently supports S3. If your application requires users to upload files, the storage on your server can fill up over a period of time. For example, a $10 a month droplet has 30 gigs of hard drive space available. Now, depending on how many users you have and how frequently they're uploading, this is actually not that much space. This is where using object storage comes in handy. So let's quickly go over the standard way of uploading and storing files locally and then we'll take a look at how to store them on DigitalOcean Spaces. So let's go into our code editor here. And this is just a fresh installation of Laravel. Let's open up the welcome view and let's get rid of all of this. We don't need this. And let's just make a form here. Sorry, I think I erased that. I don't okay, let's just make a form. Action equals, um, make a route actually let's make a route called we'll call it upload and let's see method equals post and don't forget the ink type multi part form data you need this for uploading files Okay, next we have our CSRF field. Next we have our input type equals file. Let's name it uploaded file. And then input type equals submit. Let's go to our routes file. Let's define a new one called upload post. Let's see, upload, and that will go to a controller called, let's call it attachment controller, and we'll make it go to the store method, and we'll name it upload. All right, that looks good. Let's check out our browser, see if that works. Okay, so that's the form. Let's go ahead and make our controller. Let's have it here. Okay. And let's open that up, attachment controller. And I said I was going to make a store method, so let's do that. That was the wrong snippet. Okay, store. Let's make sure we have a request coming in. Okay. So this is where our file will get uploaded. There are several ways to do this, but I personally like using the storage facade. So let's import that. And there's a method called put file as. The first parameter is the folder it gets uploaded to. Let's call it uploads. The second parameter is the file coming in. So it's a request file. We named it uploaded file. And the third parameter is the file name. Um, let's just use the time here. And I'm gonna extend, I'm gonna append the extension on it. So Let's do dot, and I'm going to use a variable here called extension, and we'll grab the extension from the request again, request file, uploaded file, and there's a method called extension, which grabs the extension, and we can append that to here. And that should be it. Let's see if this works. Refresh. Okay. 
choose a file, I have a PDF here, let's open that, and I didn't return back, but if we go into our storage, app, there we go, uploads, and there's that file we just uploaded. Um, I just want to return back here with success message upload successful just to have some nice user feedback and in our view oh, sorry here let's just put something I actually have a snippet here what's it called again it's called success I think yeah it just outputs that success message if there is one so let's Try it again. Choose a file, sample that PDF, open, and there you go. Okay, and yep, there it is. So that's how you upload in Daravel, and that's doing it locally. So let me quickly show you how to download that file. So if we go back into our controller. Actually, let's go back into our routes file. Let's make another route called download. So it should be get, it's called download. And let's make it go to um, show. And let's call it download. Now, usually, this would have a parameter associated with it, but I'm just going to hard code it in for now just to show you how to download. Okay, so let's go to our controller. Let's make a new method called uh, show, like I said. Again, this would usually take some sort of ID, but for now I'm just going to hard code it just to show you. Okay, so let's grab the file. Again, we're using storage facade, and let's get. uploads it's just the name of the file right here so let's grab the first one one five zero nine six eight eight two nine six dot pdf okay again there's several ways to do this as well but this is the way I do it and we just need one header it's just the content type. So in our case, I am hard coding it here as application PDF. And let me just show you that that works. And response, Let's return the file, and then 200 response and the headers. So that should, if we hit the download route, that should download the file that we uploaded earlier. Let's do that. Attachment controller show. I forgot the comma. Okay. There you go. So the download works. So over here, I hard-coded the content type, but you can actually get that from up here as well when you're uploading it. So we can have a variable called mime type, and we'll just do the request file. I really should store this in a variable. Uploaded file, and there's a method called get mime type. And what you should do is if this was a real application, you should be storing the path and the MIME type in your database. Let me just dump everything to show you. Extension and the MIME type. Okay. So 
So let's go back to our form. Let's upload that file and you'll see the values that you should be storing in your database. So these files. So that's the path that's returned after you upload the file. This is the MIME type you should be storing in your database. And this is, no sorry, that's the extension that you should be storing and also the MIME type. So later on, when you're downloading the file, you can just grab those files from the database instead of hard coding it like I did here. So our next step is to use DigitalOcean Spaces to store our files when we upload them instead of using the local storage. So let's go ahead and head over to DigitalOcean. You'll see a Spaces tab here for any spaces you have created already. If you want to create one, go to Create Spaces. This is your space name. Uh, this is equivalent to your bucket name in Amazon S3 and it has to be unique to all users in the region so choose wisely. There's actually a free trial going on now so you should make use of that if you can. We also have to make an API key so our application can talk to spaces so go ahead go here and make a new key and we'll put that into our application. Go back into our code here. Let's erase this line, we don't need that. And the first thing we need to do is install a composer package. It's the League Fly system, which uses AWS. So let's go ahead and install that. Our next step is to go into our config file systems file. And you'll see that there's one for S3. Let's replicate that and let's make one for spaces. Let's call it DO underscore spaces and leave the driver as S3. We have to add one more thing here. We have to add the endpoint. And the We're gonna set all the we're gonna set all these to environment variables. So let me go ahead and do that. And now make sure you just specify all these values in our environment file. So make sure the region is NYC3, make sure the bucket is whatever you named your bucket or your space, and make sure the endpoint is this endpoint here. And also obviously make sure you have your key and your secret in here. Now I'm back in my controller and all we have to do to upload this to DigitalOcean is specify the disk name here. So disk, we named it do underscore spaces and that is literally all you have to do. So let's do the same thing for the download down here. And if we go back to our application Let's go back to our form. Let's just refresh it. Okay, let's upload a file, sample the PDF, submit, and hopefully this works. And it does. Let's go into our digital ocean space. Let's check it out. There you go, there's a folder named uploads there. And you can see that it was uploaded just now. So with object storage, there's two types of permissions. Um, you can set it when you upload it by default, it's private. So there's actually a public link that will not work if it's private. It won't work if it's private to the outside world. But if you change it to public, and hit this route again, it works. So if you want to upload it and make it public by default, let's go back into our code. All we have to do is add a parameter here called public. So let's try again. Go back to our app. Choose file, sample PDF, open. Upload that, upload successful, refresh. OK, 
Okay, we have a new file right here, and this one should be public. There you go, it's public by default. Awesome. Now, when we're using our API, you can... Okay, let me just show you that we can download it. So, let's grab this. Again, we're just hard coding it, but in a real application, you would store these values in a database and then grab it. So yeah, let's download it and that should work. Go to our application, go to download. And that downloads it from the cloud. One thing to note is it will download it if it's doesn't matter if it's private or public. Uh, that setting is only for the outside world, but for our application, it's up to us to determine if this file is downloadable. So for example, if you wanted the admin user to be able to download this file, you just do a check to see if the logged in user is an admin user, or if, if you wanted to just check if the, say for example, the order belonged to the logged in user, you would do that logic in here and the API would download it regardless if it's public or private. You can also set the disk to an environment variable. Say for example, in your development environment, you want to upload locally, but in your production, you want to upload to the cloud. Uh, you can go ahead and do that. Let me show you how. Just remove the disk. Oops. Remove the disk method and all we have to do is you go into our file systems config file system you'll see that there's a file system driver environment variable just go into your environment variable set it to in our case do underscore spaces and then that will use that disk by default i'm not going to do it here so because i don't want you to see my key and now if we go into our application, this should continue to work if I refresh. And it does, awesome. Now, one more thing I wanna show you is if you wanna use a third-party tool to control your space, like if you don't like the web UI for some reason, um, I actually use Transmit, which is a very popular Mac FTP client. And it actually supports S3 and it supports DigitalOcean Spaces. All you have to do is put the server name in, which is nyc3.digitaloceanspaces.com. Put your key, put your secret, and once we do that, we can go into our bucket and just use it like an FTP server. Awesome. So there you have it, guys. We've used DigitalOcean Spaces object storage to store our files in the cloud as opposed to storing it locally. I hope you can use it in your applications. I hope you learned something new. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Please comment, please like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, thanks, bye.